Good evening and welcome to Veterans Remember. My name is Dick Gooding and I'm a Hopkinton uh, native and a veteran uh, from Hopkinton. I served in the Army during the Vietnam conflict. And uh, Veterans Remember is a series of uh, interviews and conversations with Hopkinton veterans. And uh, I've been asked to uh, be your host and I look forward to the opportunity and learning some uh, interesting insights about our Hopkins and veterans. And uh, uh, I'd like to, first of all, introduce a good friend of mine from a long time, uh, Fred White, uh, who is a, a veteran and has certainly been involved with the community for a number of years. And, uh, and he and I have worked together in many, many different fashions, not the least of which is as fellow legionnaires. And uh, we're delighted to have the opportunity to to have Fred join us tonight. Fred, how you doing tonight? Good, thank you, I, and I appreciate that, Dick. Uh, and we do go back a long way. I can remember playing golf with your dad and playing bridge with your mother. <laughs> yeah. I was telling a, a, a story. And I remember when you were in high school. And well. You are a pretty good athlete. I, I'm not sure I remember when I was in high school. <laughs> I was telling a story earlier about uh, about my stepdad, uh, who'd caught a fish and was up at uh, Brown and Smith's at 5:30 in the morning, and Finney McMillan was sitting next to him, and he he uh, my father had the fish there with him, wrapped in a in a newspaper, probably the Framingham News, and. He stuffed a golf ball, or Finney stuffed a golf ball inside the fish when my <laughs> father wasn't watching. And then my father went to pull out and show everyone the fish, and here is a golf ball sticking out of the mouth of a, of a, of a largemouth bass, and he caused everyone to fall over. And, well, listen, we didn't come here to talk about fish and golf balls. Uh, we really want to uh, talk a little bit about uh, your remembrances as a veteran. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, before we get into that, I'd really like to start uh, uh, by asking you a little bit about uh, your childhood and uh, what, uh, what brought you to Hopkinton, and, and uh, perhaps you can share with us uh, uh, a little yeah, bit of that. Yeah, well, I grew up in, uh, down on the Cape in, in Dennisport, uh, and I, I was one of five brothers. All five of us were in the service. Uh, two, uh, two enlisted from Hopkinton, and the rest of us enlisted from the Cape. Uh, and it was during the Depression years that we grew up, so have some fond memories of that. And, and I met a gal down there. Uh, my wife is from the Cape, too. She comes from Chatham. So we have a long history on, on the Cape. I still have one brother left, only one. Well, we have a, Fred was uh, kind enough to bring in a, a picture of, uh, of at least four of the, of the five brothers. Yeah. And uh, I'll share that with you. And uh, look like we have three Navy men and an Army men. Uh, two, uh, two Navy, one Coast Guard, and one Army there. My brother Jack was in the Coast Guard. Yeah, and he was a... Uh, he had a pretty good uh, service uh, experience. He was on that Murmansk run where they uh, were taking war supplies to uh, Joe Stalin's troops over in, in the oh, Murmansk right? area, and they had to go through the icebergs and the uh, wolf packs and everything else. Yeah. Oh, for crying out loud. Yeah, he had a, a real wild experience. Fred, let's go back to your time in the service. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, uh, when you joined and uh, what were the circumstances yeah, about I, I was, uh, you joining? Uh, I was working down uh, at the New, Newport Naval Training Station. We uh, was working for a contractor down there. We built the Naval Torpedo Station out on Goat Island and we built the barracks uh, next to the War College. And so uh, I was watching the Navy all along, and I, I lived on the beach with, the, on the beach that's in someone's home. Uh, there was a chief petty officer. We lived with him, so I got a lot of Navy experience, and I, and I liked the way the Navy was running. So I figured I'd join. So I went up to Providence, and I, 
told them I wanted to join, and they said, how old are you? So I gave them my birth date, and they said, you can't come in yet. <laughs> I was only 16. Oh, is that right? Yeah, so they said, you've got to wait till your 17th birthday, and then you've got to have your father's permission to get in. So I, I did that. And from there, after I got sworn in in 1942, I went to, uh, I went to my boot training camp right there in uh, Newport. Rhode Island, mm -hmm. uh, which was a pretty good sized uh, base at the time, and, and I enjoyed it. I, I enjoyed the Navy. I enjoyed the uh, service life. Uh, I was going to make a career of it until I met my wife, but she was she was inclined another way. She didn't want to. She wasn't. Be. She wasn't so sure she <laughs> wanted to be a Navy wife. No, huh? that's right. So, uh, from from. Uh, that training, and, and I liked the Navy because it was a competitive idea, a competitive bid. You, you did it on your own merits. You had to study for, for different rates, and if you took the exam and passed, then, and there was an opening, you got it. And, and I liked that idea rather than just being promoted from somebody's say-so. So I, I went from uh, boot camp I went to uh, Fisher's Island, New York, mm -hmm. which is off uh, off of New London, Connecticut. It's a private island, and, and we took over a big private country club out there. The Navy did, and we lived pretty good out there on that. <laughs> but uh, we were we were trained out there. At that time, it was top secret stuff. I was in a in the sonar. I see. Uh, of course, I know you know all about that, Dick, and. Uh, but so that was we, probably we were, pretty revolutionary back then, it wasn't was. it? It yeah. was. Radar and sonar, we had to, we, we were sworn, we were restricted to what we could say and what we could do. Uh, but it was good. Uh, I got uh, some good training there. I got, I got training in, we, we took uh, physics, the physics of sound, and we took the physics of, of uh, radio and, uh, and radar. And, and mathematics, those are the courses we had to take out there in order to get promoted. And so when I left there, I went to Long Island, New York, which was a staging ground for, for the invasion of Africa. I see. And uh, so we learned all about landing craft and how to land and where to land and how to swim with a pack on and, a pack and so forth. And that was a that was a good experience also. Uh, and by the way, I think that at uh, one time, <laughs> because this is a presidential year, John McCain's father, when he was a captain, was the captain at Long Beach, Long Island. Oh, is that right? Yeah, yeah. Isn't that amazing? He's captain of yeah. inspection, uh, and he was a well-respected captain. So were you were you being trained uh, to really be involved with the uh, being trained, African invasion? Being trained to be in the invasion. That's mm -hmm. right. And uh, and did you know that at the time? Did you know that that's where you were headed? Uh, no, we didn't know we were headed for Africa because right. we took off with uh, with our blues on. You know, our, they're almost pure wool and they're pretty heavy. Yeah. And then we were going over to Africa, so we we got a uh, change of clothes in midstream. They, <laughs> they they issued us the new stuff. I can remember going over there. The, at that time, the um, O3 was the was the big weapon. That was the Springfield O3. I know you're familiar with yeah. that. And uh, they were changing over to the Garand, uh, the M16, is it? Uh, probably the M14 back then, yeah. or, or maybe, yeah, probably yeah, the M14. And they issued them on board, and they issued them to, to the, I was on the um, USS Brazil at the time, which was a converted troop carrier. I see. I was on there as a gunner's mate. And they issued these weapons to these guys that were still cosmoline in them, and they had to show them how to field strip them, how to take care of them, and so forth. It was kind of, kind of different. You know, you just pull back the bolt there, you put your thumb in, and and they, and they instruct a lot of about 
half his half his thumb. thumb. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty good. <laughs> but that was good. And, and when we landed in uh, in Casablanca, we landed in Fadala, which is which is a, a town about 15 miles north of Casablanca. That's where the the uh, Sultan had his palace and so forth. But we landed the uh, General MacArthur's Third Army. I see. Yeah, and I can remember when we went up ashore in Fadala, seeing the photographers up in their waist of water taking pictures of him and his pearl handle revolvers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, now, uh, what was going on in North Africa at that point in time when you when you guys uh, when you guys landed? Was, well, it uh, was under the Vichy French. Yeah. And uh, Admiral Patin, yeah, Patin was the was the leader of the Vichy uh, French group, and he got assassinated one time when we were on liberty, and <laughs> they pulled us in fast, but. Uh, the Germans were there, but mostly Vichy French. So we were fighting more Frenchmen than we were Germans when we went ashore. Hmm. One that, might argue that's still going on, but I, but yeah. I won't go there. Yeah, and, and a lot of a lot of things are, are so so much the same. You know, the, there was the Arabs over there. And, uh, now Rommel wasn't there at that point in time. What? Was Rommel uh, in North Africa at General that time? Rommel was up in the Kasserine Pass. Okay. Yeah, and he was there. Uh, we met, uh, we had a great prisoner exchange one time when we, we had hospital patients uh, from Germany and up. We exchanged them on, on, a, on a hospital ship in Casablanca. We, we essentially, the, the People I was with, because of our training, we were we were spotted to do HECP in all the main ports. What's you know, HECP? Harbor Entrance Control Post. Geez, you still remember that, huh? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And we uh, we had uh, magnetic loops out, uh, you know, for detecting submarines. We had sonar buoys out and. So we this is primarily the, the work that you had been trained for yep. was really anti-submarine yes. uh, yes. warfare because yep. uh, subs yep. were doing such yeah, a... We got credited, uh, over in Castle, we got credited with a, uh, with a German mine uh, land kill. Oh, good so, for you. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's a big submarine, yeah. the laid mines. But they used to try and sneak in and it was our job to keep the the way open so that the convoys could come in. And uh, we sunk the John Bad over there. That was the, their big uh, battleship. They had uh, quad mount batteries of 16 inch guns. Quad mount 16 inches. That's a yeah, lot of. But they didn't have time to put the armor plate on the damn thing. <laughs> yeah. So that when the USS Massachusetts let go of Salvo, it went right through her, right down to the bottom. Right down to the bottom. <laughs> yeah. Huh? How long were you in, in North Africa, Fred? Oh, I was over there about almost three years. I was over there a long time, and then I. I figured, I, you know, the best way to get back was somehow I wanted to get back to the States, and uh, they opened up the V-12 program, which was uh, for officer candidates. They, yes. they, took, uh, they took Navy guys that qualified through a competitive exam and sent them back to go to college and become commissioned officers. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, took the, I took the test, and I passed, and I had good grades. And they assigned me to the University of Maryland. When I got back, before I could go to the first class, they wiped out the program. <laughs> like, they the program. like the government does, you know. <laughs> so, so then I went to, down to Key West with the fleet uh, for sound school as a, as a training person. I see. We, we trained uh, we trained officers and we trained uh, uh, people in submarine warfare. A general training, or is this still back uh, with some of the sonar? Yeah, it was all sonar. I and, see. Uh, yeah, well, that uh, must have been some pretty nice duty down in Key West. 
It was. I, was, I, was, I witnessed my... Long. You didn't see Jimmy Buffett down there singing, <laughs> no, did you? No, that might no. be before him, huh? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Key West was quite a town, and uh, they had a hurricane while we were there, and boy, we got showered with coconuts, I'll tell you. <laughs> I never right? ate so many coconuts in all my life. Yeah, yeah that I was great. I was down there uh, just a couple of years ago. My uh, son and, and now daughter-in-law got married uh, on a sailboat. Oh, wow. Uh, on Key West and uh, wow. went great. through, you know, you see the Hemingway, uh, a lot of Ernest Hemingway uh, things there. And then Down the, there, there's I, uh, a White House, too. The uh, didn't Who was it? Was it Franklin Delano Roosevelt? Uh, Harry, yeah, uh, Truman. Truman. Was down there. Truman, yeah, had Harry a, Truman, yeah. Had a White House. We did a yeah, White House yeah. tour uh, down in Key West, and that was fascinating. That was inside the Navy base, that yeah. White House. And, uh, we, they developed some some uh, new weapons down there, you know. Uh, I can remember putting. Uh, we used to equip the the school ships with hedgehogs. That was a new. Uh, it was a anti-submarine device that would fire only on impact. I see. You know, the depth charges were good, but they, they raised up so many bubbles, the zone I'm in couldn't know, didn't know what was going on. <laughs> there was nothing but, but reverberations all the time. Yeah. So that was quite a, quite a development. How long did you stay in Key West? Oh, it must have been, must have been about seven months. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I got some good duty down there because uh, when I was in the on the Cape, I, I played in the school orchestra and I had a set of drums and everything. So I got to join the band for the officers' club. I see. And so all we had to do was play for dances for the officers' club. That was good <laughs> duty. You had to dress pretty good, but that was great duty. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's funny. Now, now, where did you go after Key West? Well, then I came up to uh, Bainbridge, Maryland, mm -hmm. and I came up as a as a senior petty as a senior petty officer that was going to take a bunch of, of new recruits through either gun school or uh, NAP school. Mm -hmm. NAP school was Naval Academy Preparatory, so I was waiting in the cadre, waiting to pick up a a crew. And the first one that developed was a uh, crew for the gunner school, the gunner's mate and hydraulics. I see. It was, it was a good school, they, they did good training. And we went over to fire the, the big uh, 16, 18 inch guns, you know, 16 inch guns. It was pretty good. Uh, for a guy from the Cape, uh, when I lived on the Cape, you know, uh, it was a pretty much of a retirement community and a mm -hmm. vacation community, and never saw some of the things that happened, and gave me, uh, gave me a big appreciation for what education is needed, uh, sure. what kind of training is needed. So I always had in mind that I would, if I got the chance, I'd get into something that had to do with training of young people. And I got a chance when I get used the GI Bill to go to Fitchburg State College to get my bachelor's, and then I got my master's there. And then I was Paul Bento, a man for him, from this town who you probably knew. Sure. You probably had him in school. Probably did. And uh, he was a superintendent, and every time I got a another degree or another, passed another course, he gave me another job. <laughs> so I wound up in the guidance office, which I, I liked very much. Now, how many years were you at Keefe Tech, Fred? Uh, about 18. 18 years? Yeah. yeah. And, and did you, you went to, back to college as soon as you left the Navy at the end of the war? No, I went to work for Dorden Tyler up in Westboro. Oh, okay who were local contractors, you know, we built some, uh, some shopping centers and mm -hmm. we built uh, a couple of churches. That was a tough job. 
mm -hmm. working on a church and you hit your finger and you, you can't say the, what you want to say. <laughs> now, were you living in Hopkinton mm -hmm. at that point in time? Yes, I was. And yeah. were you and you and your wife were married at that point? Yeah, yeah. yeah we had uh, and we had one youngster or two youngsters at that time. So, how long have you lived in Hopkinton now? Oh, we came in '42, about 50, 50 some odd years. Fifty some odd years. Yeah. So, you think you'll stay? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I got my place over there on Cunningham Street. Cunningham Street, uh, I don't know if you knew that. There's uh, four Cunningham families in town. But that Cunningham was uh, Elsie Cunningham and, and Cyrus Cunningham. And they were farmers. Mm -hmm. They owned about 40 acres out there. Mm -hmm. So that, that's how I come to come up here, and, and I'm, the land that my house is on was given to me by my stepmother as a present, so. Oh, is that right? Yeah, so I was part of the. Uh, so that's worked out pretty well for yeah, you, Fred. Yeah, it has, <laughs> it has. Fred, why don't you, uh, you, you know, we've mentioned most, most of the things about your service, but uh, You've served the town of Hopkinton uh, for a number of years in a number of capacities. Yeah. I think it would be interesting, uh, you know, if you'd share with us a little bit uh, about some of the things you've done for the town uh, yeah, well, over I, the I past those, number of years. Uh, I enjoyed that. I, I was, well, I was on, uh, I'm a, uh, a lifetime member. I got uh, awarded a lifetime member of the School Committees Association because of my involvement in the schools. Built, I was chairman of the building committee for Keefe Tech, and I was uh, on the building committee for the Elmwood School. I was clerk of the works at the Elmwood School, and I was clerk of the works at the center school when they made the first remodel and put, and put the addition on, the elevator and so forth. So I, I, I was involved in a lot of construction stuff. And Dr. Hosmer was a superintendent at that time he followed uh, Eugene Thayer, who, and the, when you were there, was John Carey. He was the principal. Jack O'Brien was the uh, uh, superintendent. Jo oh, Jack O'Brien. Helen's. Yeah. Uh, Jack O'Brien had a, had a way of handling people that was unbelievable. <laughs> people could come in and they would be as mad as hornets. And when they went out, Jack would have his arm around them and they'd all be smiling, shaking hands. <laughs> that was the way to run the school. He did a good job. But I remember yeah. as a young kid, you didn't want to be called into, uh, oh, into Mr. O'Brien's yeah. office. No, absolutely not. <laughs> he was a very imposing man. Yeah. Fred, anything else you'd like to, uh, to, to share with us tonight? Well, I think one of the things that, that I, you know, I'm talking about community service, one of the things that that I like to refer to and I, I'm kind of proud of is, is the senior center we have. I was on that committee with, with Tom, Tom Nealon and Dick, o, Dick Brault, J, uh, Jack, uh, I can't remember his last name now, but uh, that was a great, uh, great undertaking for the town and it turned out very well, and it's being well, well used right now by the people that are I, over there. I wholeheartedly concur. It's a, it's a great facility, and I think it's quite encouraging. I know you and I meet at the Friday once a month uh, veterans breakfast that is held there, and uh, it's just a very pleasant opportunity for us to get together, and I think yeah. may have been one of those breakfasts that, that spawned uh, this Veterans Remember program that we're yeah, doing today. Uh, Hank Alessio is, is, uh, is a good worker and, and he's kind of taken a hold of this thing. He's done very well with it. Yes, he certainly is. Yeah. And he, they also put on uh, put on that veterans banquet that they have once a right. year over in uh, over at the, the Wood, Woodville, Woodville Rod, yeah. Rod and Gun. And that, we've done that, that, what, six, seven years now? Yeah, it's a very excellent thing to do in a very nice time. Well, listen, Fred, I really want to thank you uh, on behalf of, uh, of HCAM, and I want to thank you on behalf of the community for sharing uh, your thoughts in Veterans Remember. And 
appreciate it in any My other pleasure. time. I'm going to be watching to see some of these, <laughs> some of these guys that keep coming through. I know so many of them, you know. Yeah. Johnny Cahill must have a, a thousand and one stories. Well, you must have a few yourself. Well, they, you spent they, some they time over there. They, they probably are tired of listening to me <laughs> tell stories, Fred. I'd, <laughs> I'd rather give people the opportunity and uh, let me help work, work with them. Uh, I want to thank uh, all of you for joining us on Veterans Remember. And uh, again, this was Fred White uh, sharing his story with us. Uh, I look forward to having the opportunity to uh, uh, spend time with some other veterans in the, in the upcoming weeks. And uh, again, I want to thank you very much for joining us this evening. Have a good night. Lighting all set? Looking good, Jim. Thanks. Okay, guys, the quickest 26 minutes you ever had. It's going to fly by. All right. Tom, you ready to go? Yep. You're mostly on the guest with some over the shoulder shots. John, yeah. you're going to be mostly on the host, but get ready to truck right and give me some shots with both of them. Gotcha. Burl, at 15 minutes in, we need to cue them for a 60 second break. Got it. Thanks. You want one of these? Send me an email. I'll pull a few names out of a hat. Finally, I keep <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You found the channel and you've watched the shows. Now, find out how the magic happens on Inside HCAM. Twenty-six minutes you ever had. It's gonna fly by. All right. Tom, you ready to go? Yep. You're mostly on the guest with some over the shoulder shots. John, yeah. you're gonna be mostly on the host, but get ready to truck right and give me some shots with both of them. Gotcha. Burl, at fifteen minutes in, we need to cue them for a sixty second break. Got it. Thanks. You want one of these? Send me an email. I'll pull a few names out of a hat. Finally, I keep <laughs> Thank you. I don't get it.